everyone, it's Movie Lover 120 here, and I'm here with a brand new movie review. And this movie review is going to be for none other than my final Friday the 13th review. My final review in the Friday the 13th series, and that's going to be for none other than, of course, the 2009 remake. Yeah, it looks a little upside down because, well, this is recorded on my iPad today. So, yeah. So, so eventually around um, 2009, Friday 13th, like many other slasher films such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, Nightmare on the Street, were all rebooted. And Friday 13th was, of course, among one of those films to be rebooted. So, yeah. And of course, like, what well, you should, probably should know, the Friday the 13th films had never been what you would call masterpieces, with the exceptions of Jason Lives in the final chapter. I love the series, but but I definitely agree it doesn't come close to something like A Night Roam Street or Halloween. After seeing this remake, I have to say that I enjoy it despite what people think of it and find it the best of the Platinum Dude Slasher remakes. As make no mistake, horror fans, Friday the 13th 2009 isn't exactly a remake of 1980s slasher classic, except for the opening five minutes, but kind of more of a somewhat sequel to the popular series that combines elements from the first four movies. Even still, Friday fans will find much to enjoy in this splashy, well-made slasher flick. This film makes no presentations. It's a slasher film and acts like one, too. The action arrives hard and fast with bloody, brutal kill sequences and some intense chase scenes. There's also a, d a dash of dark humor and plenty of topless actresses thrown in for good measure. And of course, there are of course pros and cons I have with this film. And where would I rank it? I rank it in about sixth place, personally. Like, for the pros, the movie was badass. Like, as you know, I'm a big fan of the Friday 13 films, specifically part one, two, three, four, and six mainly. As part six being my all time favorite, and part eight being my most hated. I can see some fun references that were in the original movies of the series, and there's even enough fun nudity and sex sequences that aren't really that rough and instead make them look funny as Jason attempts to distract one of the couples for his next prey. <clears throat> and the killing and death sequences are very, very disturbing in some parts, like, for example, a girl's burned alive inside a sleeping bag that hangs above a campfire, and a guy's tortured with an axe thrown into his back, but Jason ruthlessly punches him on the back and it pales through his chest, and one guy's a pill, but that's not enough. He's shoved onto the back of a truck with these poles sticking out and it impales him so badly. Then the car drives off with his feet dragging along the road. Second pro I had with this remake, Jason was very insane. I haven't seen him so ruthless and brutal since part 7. Like, in his uncut killing sequences that were trimmed down by the MPAA. Although they can be found on YouTube. And the best thing I liked about... Sorry. Not him say he ran furiously after some of his victims. He did walk, but oh boy, did he run too. He wasn't superhuman well up until the end, he kind of was, but hey, he even has a thick neck, and throughout the entire movie, his victims managed to, to injure him. However, it doesn't stop him from killing some more. The only problem with this Jason is that he wasn't too much on screen, because I would have wanted to see more scenes of him in the theatrical cut anyways. Which is only 97 damn minutes. So if you ever want to watch this movie, please watch the unrated killer cut. Because it's way better than the theatrical cut crap. And of course, there was for me, the acting was slightly above average factors who I'd never seen before. For us, what, like, Willa Ford, Julianne Gill, Arlen Escarpeta, and Jonathan Sadowski are the actors in this movie, and I've never heard of any of them before. There were... Or there are some well-known actors in this movie, too, like Jared Ped Padalecki and Danielle Panabaker, were, who were quite this good leading couple. Amanda... And Amanda Rigetti's performance was really good. But cut to characters, despite all of being stunning beautiful, I enjoyed every single one. I just couldn't help but want to know something more about them. I knew what everyone's names were from looking at the film's IDB page, but didn't your characters' names up until near the end. 
or character development or simply less characters in the movie would have done justice for me, but I prefer Whitney and Co. over Trent and Co. However, speaking of Trent, I think Trent is kind of a dick, but he's actually kind of a funny dick in a way. Yeah, I mean, the only problems I have with Usual are some of the characters, but despite having problems with the characters, the characters are a little more tolerable in this film than some of the other Friday 13th movies. And and another bad quality I have is that they don't even show Jason's backstory. Like, I would have wanted to see at least Jason's backstory. I mean, this. I mean Leatherface gets a backstory for some reason. Michael Myers gets an unneeded backstory for some weird reason. And the killer in Black Christmas got an unneeded backstory in his remake. One that was very gross, too. I'll admit that. One neither of us needed to see. Fourth, now I'm not really, I'm really not this guy who notices if one's directing on a movie's good or not, but however, when it comes to horror films, but I think Marcus Nispel did a fine job on this new Friday 13th remake. He also directed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, and that remake's actually pretty good too. As with the similarity with, with his take on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I didn't really see much similarity in style. Even though some people may seem to notice. So yeah. And once again, I feel like this killer cut should have been the version we got. Probably would have been received way better. Would have been way more successful. And feels more like a proper Friday 13th movie length. Not a lame, boring 97 minutes where the characters are undeveloped. Because in a 97 minute cut, there's parts that are really rushed and some characters didn't really get the shine. Let's just say that for, that phrase could have worked out better. And one last thing, the writing could have been strictly better. And there wasn't enough suspense like in the first four Friday flicks. And now for the favorite character. Well, like I said, they, I think my favorite character would have to be Trent. You can't help but love to hate the guy. He's a dick, but he's actually very funny as hell. Well, in favorite death sequence. It's a tie between a sleeping bag on fire and impales by pulling the truck. With that, and as a fan of the Friday 13th franchise, it's a very strong entry even if it is a reboot. So if you're a fan of this franchise, I'd still give this reboot a watch. Yeah, it's not necessarily a remake per se. It's more of a reimagining of the first four films combined. And here's how I'm going to rank it. I am going to give the remake a 7 out of 10. And there we go. And with that, we are officially done talking about Friday the 13th movies. So, yeah. And until then, that will... And that's it for my Friday 13th series. I had a blast talking about this series. It's just fun to watch. And fun to do. And with that being said, that will be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you like this and want to see more, and don't forget to like, subscribe to Movie Lover 120.